What's up? This is Metal Nate, and I'm here with Sean from Arsonist Skid All the Girls. How are you doing today? Dude, I'm f***ing awesome, man. Thank you for having me. And uh, your newest album, Motherland, just released May 17th. How has the fan reaction been uh, to the new material? Oh, man, all the uh, all the uh, reaction that we've been getting from all our fans have been really positive. I mean, we, you know, everyone, some, some people are going to hate, but, dude, all of our old school fans, all of our new fans, they've been loving it, you know? it's just, they, they feel like it has elements from our first, second, third, and even, you know, and this being our fourth record, it's got a little bit of each. <laughs> and uh, where did the title for that come from? Well, each each, each uh, title on Motherland definitely has its own story, uh, any in particular that you're wondering about. Well, I mean, uh, the, the album itself, rather. Uh, oh, the album itself, Motherland? It came from, we did uh, two extensive tours in Russia, one tour in 2009, one tour in 2010, and uh, each of them having very, very, very good crowd responses, and, you know, just they became very successful tours, and us being from Santa Cruz, California, and going to Russia to tour, we were just like, geez, man, like, you know, this is really insane. I hope that, you know, we get positive reactions, and it turns out that, we have a lot of fans in Russia, you know, all across, like, the whole span of Russia. Like, <laughs> that's, that's we, we were the first, uh, we were the first uh, American bands in, like, seven or eight different cities, you know? It was pretty, pretty, like, exhilarating. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy that you can have, I mean, Russia of all places, I would think, like, Japan or something, usually people joke about bands being big in Japan, when they're, even if they're not, like that big in the States or they aren't, they're bigger in Japan than they are here, but Russia, wow. Right. So it's kind of paying well, homage you know, to that? You know, those, uh, those third world countries, or like, I wouldn't say that, like, I mean, it is, it's, you know, every country has its poverty, but Russia, you know, is one of those countries that you think about, like, you know, it, I mean, it's cold all the time, you know, and like, you know, has its like traditional culture, which, you know, doesn't yeah. consist of like the, the mass population needing a whole lot, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And so, like, we look at it from the States as kind of like a country that no one ever goes to, you know, like, doesn't get a lot of tourism there or anything. So, you know, us, you know, going to Russia, we were really stoked on it because we didn't know what to expect. <clears throat> well, it's cool. And, you know, my, yeah. my mother, uh, Russia having that, that also known as mother, the motherland or whatever, you know what I mean? So we kind of like, I don't know. We came together as a band when we toured when we toured in Russia because, you know, the six people in the band, like, we all knew each other, but when you go to a different country, especially, like, a country like Russia, no one speaks, no one speaks English at all, so all you have is each other, you know, you really, you really grow close to each other, and, uh, and us being that it was the right, it was during the writing process of this new record, you know, we kind of felt it was necessary to base it off of, like, what inspired us most as people and musicians. Okay, that's pretty neat though. That can, that can all kind of be encompassed in the title. Yeah. Um, is there any it's a lot deeper than people think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Is is there a single track that really defines uh, this new record for you, or like a favorite one? Well, um, like a, I have a personal favorite, and I have kind of like this. I have a song that I could like explain to you. That's like mainly about motherland. Like our the sixth track entitled "At Docha," you know, is kind of like. The lyrics in that song are all based off of our experiences in Russia, and so like cause that's the one that kind of explains the record the most. But my personal favorite, you know, is uh, is West Cliff only because you know it's it has it's a lot deeper than people think, you know, obviously. But because I wrote West Cliff on piano and uh, with Garen, our drummer, and um, that kind of is just like one of those things that we we weren't quite sure if we were going to put in the record or not, and so being that like. Before we actually, you know, confirmed that it was going to be whatever track on Motherland, we felt that it was the most, like, different thing, you know, like, who's going to, like, what are people going to say about this song? And we've been getting a lot of positive feedback, you know? That's cool, yeah. No, that's a great song. And actually, I was going to ask about uh, another song, Tempest. Uh, yeah. I know, I know you may not have written the lyrics, but uh, do you happen to know what the song is about or like what the general idea of that song is? Because I was reading through the lyrics and wasn't sure. I'm not the best person to uh, ask about that song. I did, in fact, write like a, like some lyrics here and there throughout the CD, but the, the main concept for every song comes from our vocalist, Jared Manette. Okay. 
And, um, yeah, so he'd be a better person to talk to, and he's not here with me at the moment, but uh, I couldn't really quite explain that song to you as well as he can, so. That's okay, maybe that's, you know. That's not a big deal. But, um, so you guys write as a group, then? You don't write uh, individual tracks on your own? No, no, totally. All the whole writing process of, of Arch Let's Get All the Girls um, is definitely from, from Portals and Motherland. It's definitely a group effort. I would say previous albums, um, like Hits from the Bow and uh, Game of Life, it was definitely Arthur Alvarez, our guitar player, and Garen Rosen, our drummer, and they're you know they're the two um, two original members, and they were the ones that wrote every CD before, and they also had a huge part in the in Portals and Motherland. But Motherland, out of all four of our records, definitely is six total people writing, like full on writing, you know. And how do you? And we all, um, I'm sorry, just going along with that. How do you end up with such ridiculous sounding songs? I mean, they're great, but like the parts are ridiculous. I, some of them differ so much. Um, how do how do you um, get all those parts and combine them together? Like, how do you even conceptualize such a? It's just kind of like a frenetic. You know, like I said, all six people have been writing on this record. So, like, if 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 Arthur comes to us with an idea on his guitar. And what we do is we, I think we do it totally like old school style. Like I notice bands now, they all write on their MacBooks. But what we do is we go in and we go into our practice spot and we come in with one riff and, you know, and maybe maybe three or four for a song for each song. And then we kind of like see what sounds good, how, how it naturally flows together. And if any weird transitions come up on, you know, just us naturally thinking what whatever feels natural, you know, we'll go with, you know, if, uh, you know, if, um, if I have a keyboard part where uh, I, it's just a simple, you know, whatever keyboard part I thought sounded cool, we'll put guitars to it, we'll put bass to it, we'll put drums to it, and then we'll feed off of that, and then someone else will write a riff off of that, someone else will write a riff off of that, and then we'll all just bump heads and just come up with this crazy concoction of sound that <laughs> comes out pretty pretty well, I think, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, how long is the writing process then? Because that sounds like it's a very, I mean, it's a very hands-on approach. And I think that that's cool that's that it's like that. You can definitely hear the difference between something like that and something that's been, as you said, like Pro Tool MacBook uh, oh. built. But how, how long, how many meetings and like do you guys have before you, you come up with um, like an entire album worth of material to go into the studio and record? I mean, I couldn't give you an exact number, but, um, you know, we... We we tour all the freaking time, so like we never have any off time. But when we do, you know, we have little bits, few hours here and there, you know, like for like four or five previous months before we go in and record it. So I would say that we would total like, I mean, it's hard to say, you know, like we all of us I feel are really creative in our own way. We we all feed off of different musicians and different artists that we listen to and different, you know, like. Uh, styles of, and lifestyles is what I'm saying. You know, we all live live differently. So, you know, someone can have seventy different ideas, and seventy different ideas coming from six different heads can can gain a lot at once. So we don't take a lot of time. You know, we don't really do pre production and stuff like that. Like for Motherland, we did a few video pre productions um, to get some like structured vocal parts, melodies, and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So like. If we have the basic idea of the song, like we've been practicing it for so long, we'll go in and record it, and then Jared will take it and listen to it for a bunch of times and, you know, see what he can come up with. And uh, But other than that, we do a total punk rock style. We go in, we feed off each other, we write songs like we were still in high school, you know what I mean? Like, we still do it for fun, that's why we're out there, you know? Like, yeah. You know, no, not a lot of touring bands make a lot of money these days, so, like, you see the ones that are still working hard and, and uh... And you can really see the difference between bands is what I'm saying. The ones that work hard and, like, use their musicianship as, like, part of their power or the ones that, like, don't really work hard and then, and then just kind of just say, whatever, we're going to put out another record or write it on a MacBook, which is still cool. I'm not saying that's it's not cool, but we feel like a total organic feel when we write music. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And, um... On that note, then, um, you guys cross several genre boundaries, subgenre boundaries of metal and hardcore and other styles. Um, the sound that encompasses so many different types of music, uh, what kind of influences do you guys have? And you personally, of course, do. I mean, we, like I said, there's six people in the band. We all feed off of different music. But me personally, like, I listen to, like, I listen to, like, a lot of, like, chill music. I would say, like, some of, like, my my few recent bands I've been listening to uh, is, like, Portugal the Man, you know, Minus the Bear, uh, mellower music. But that, 
you know, that gives me more inspiration to, like, write, like, some funky ass keyboard riffs or something <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, that's where we that's where we get, like, that weird style. But, like, you know, we want to have, like, a, a full-on, you know, a guitar, a guitar riff that's super pissed off. You know, like, we listen to, like, a lot of Behemoth or we listen <laughs> to a lot of, like, you know what I mean? Cannibal Corpse or, uh, or like, Nile. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah definitely. Like our death metal vibes and like I don't know we all listen to a bunch of weird different music and so like I know Darren our drummer listened to, to some like his, I scroll through his iPod and I couldn't I couldn't even tell you who like 80 different people were you know what I mean yeah no um, actually can, can you hang on for one second I'm sorry yeah. so, are these questions my bass player can answer yeah alright well, um, let, let me just pass the phone off to Greg Howell alright yeah sure how's it going man good how's it going Greg um doing pretty well just cruising back to Santa Cruz from picking up a buddy from a family tour with. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, so what, what do you, what's going on with you, man? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, we were in the midst of an interview, and I guess I can throw the last couple questions to you, if that's cool with you. Sure, dude. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so one of the last questions was, um, we, we were talking to Attila on, uh, just a day or two ago, and they partied their asses off, and I was wondering, how does your, uh, how does, how does Arsenis get all the girls roll when they're on tour? How do we, uh, party? Is that what you're Well, I was saying, like, how do you, well, I mean, like, what's tour life like for you guys? Do you guys party all the time? Do you, are you guys more mellow? Um, we usually kick back, and we all interact really well together, uh, make jokes with each other. Pretty much our humor is just always uh, um, yeah, we definitely like to drink and smoke. Uh, we always uh, have friends coming out to kick down and hang out and have a good time. That's what we're usually all about, all about, or like all around in life. You know, like just want to ha- like have fun, but we don't like necessarily like get blacked out drunk or like shooting up some gnarly drugs or anything yeah, every nice. fucking day. Like, but yeah. we just hang out and have a good time. I mean, pretty much, uh, we like to drink, uh, not drink too much before we play, obviously, but. Yeah, no, that's that how tour life be. goes. We just look for friends to stay with on the road and not try and spend a lot of money. Fair enough. Um, since I've got you here, uh, I had already asked him this, but uh, where do you like? What kind of music are you most influenced by? Um, oh, as man. a bass player, I mean, as a bass player, I always like to listen to like funky stuff with good uh, rhythm and whatnot. It's so, like Victor I mean, all, Wooten all sorts stuff? of like reggae and <laughs> different sources. Sh- I mean. And then, like, our heavier vibes, I always just listen to, you know, all, all sorts of ranges of shit. I mean, I could just name drop, but, I mean, it's pointless. Like, we have so many different influences. But uh, as a bass player, I mean, definitely love, like, bands like 311 and, like, uh, Revolution has been growing on me a lot lately. Different stuff. I mean, Sublime for fat, funky bass lines. Heck, yeah. Cool. And uh, you but, guys... Uh, yeah. You guys are about to embark upon a headlining tour in Canada uh, with Structures, Volumes, and Fallen Archaea. Um, what does the rest of the what is what does that tour look like for you guys? And what does the rest of the year look like for Arsenal Skill the Girls? Well, that tour we're really stoked about. Um, we've gone out with two of the bands we've already toured with. We did uh, brought Structures on our headlining tour back in November of last year, and we also had uh, Volumes on our headlining tour that we just did. Uh, earlier this spring um we're really stoked on that uh canada is going to be sick super stoked to go to british columbia the band's never been in western canada that far at least um and then for the rest of the year we're just going to see what happens see what kind of tours we can jump onto, and we're going to take a little break over the summer but we're ready to go back out and hopefully do a full u.s or full europe by the end of the year Okay. Uh, are there any like goals you'd say you have for the, for uh, where you want to see Arsenal Scale the Girls in uh, like at the end of the year, like something that you'd like to do or anything like that? I would love to go back to Europe and Russia, of course. Uh, that's definitely a big goal, and I just want to get on a good tour and just play some good shows. Um, main goal is to try and see how our album does this year and uh, keep writing music because we want to keep putting more out. Fair enough. Cool. Well, thank you very much for doing this interview with us. For sure, man.